Hey guys, we're back on figures this week, and this time we're going to be looking at the first of one of Otabukia's Arcandia kits with their recently released Elena kit. Now let's open her up and take a look. Now, uh, one thing I did do prior to starting this review was the sort um, her parts between her upper human parts and her lower horse parts, as well as some of her armor parts as best I could. So, uh, starting out, and I'm leaving these in the uh, bag only because I don't want them getting loose, are her faceplate parts. We're given a total of four different options here, which is acceptable. The one complaint I have, however, is we're not given any blank face parts. Um, why they chose this, I'm not sure. There's no reason I can think of other than possibly cost savings. Um, so that is a bit disappointing. Uh, I do know they, Ota Bukia is uh, coming out soon with, at least at the time of recording of this, and hopefully these will show up well, are coming out with um, blank ace eight parts for their uh, Megami device line. So it is entirely possible that those will be able to be used here interchangeably. Now we next up we've got some more detail parts again, leaving them in the uh, bag and hopefully camera and lights will cooperate. Uh, basically a lot of her smaller detail it's as well as uh, her ear parts overall sculpting in them and use the ears here hopefully they will show up well on camera are nicely sculpted and detailed uh, continue on we got a couple little odds and end parts as well as a joint clear parts are acceptable no real surprises there now, this next sprue is one I was actually surprised with. Um, if you look at the artwork she's based on, she's wearing almost like a uh, full body tight type suit. And Kotobuke has done an impressive job rendering it uh, here on this sprue in this um, sort of milky flesh color. Uh, it does a really a convincing job of conveying skin color through seen through fabric and this is the first time I personally have seen this done in any type of kit you know, I've seen painted but not in the actual plastic form um, without a doubt I think Kota Buka has done a very excellent job here capturing the color um, I do think since it is a gloss color um, it does leave some room for improvement and I would say probably a flatter matte coat would definitely um, do it a lot of justice but again fantastic job here um, as you can see we probably have got a couple different options uh, for her bust as well as her abdomen and surprisingly they did include a couple other armor bits and other parts on this brew which for the life of me I, I, I'm unsure why they chose to do that I'm thinking just you now for sake of placement or really couldn't figure out where else to put them that would make sense but I digress uh, continuing on we've got some of her armor parts as well as some of her uh, clothing detail bits, bows, and what have you. Again, nothing really you know, jumping out as potential issues. Uh, next, we've got all of her hair parts as well as her tail. Um, one thing to note, I, I only got the base model that was released. Uh, if you special order it through Otabukia. They do have an alternate uh, version of this sprue that comes in white. 
Saw some photos of it. Looks nice, but frankly, you could still get that effect by uh, painting. So that is something to be aware of. If you do want to get those extra parts, you will have to order it through Kotopukiya. But uh, looking at her hair, um, compared to some of the other figure kits we looked at, such as the Frame Arms girls, they, they are roughly analogous to one another. And I would even say you can freely interchange them. And truth be told, I've already seen some images of people doing just that, and they're quite impressive. Moving on, we next up have her um, abdomen parts. Again, nothing super jumping out here for the most part. Uh, it's much the same as any frame arms, Megami device, 30 minute sister kit. There. Next, we have all of our flesh parts. Again, most of this combined to her upper torso and arms. Um, as I said before, it would have been nice had they included uh, some blank ace plates. Here, I, I don't understand the rationale as to why they did not do that. Next up, we've got a sprue containing some more of the detail parts around some of her armor and uh, other little odds and end details. Overall, it's a nice uh, casting as well as the general color of it. And this is another area where I wish it hopefully shows up. Next up, we've got the base parts for her lance. Again, give you a sense of scale using my hand. She is not exactly a tiny figure kit, so she will stand out once built. Continuing, uh, more uh, parts for her armor, as well as a few other more detail, oops, excuse me, detail parts. Spur of polycaps, and um, smartly, they include parts for a base. Uh, since she is going to be quite heavy uh, once built, you're probably going to need to use a base for her, depending on how exactly you pose her. Um, in the box art reference, they do show her sort of rearing up. And so, or that type of posing, you will need the base to support her. Now, continuing on to, now to her horse parts, it's a fairly complex assembly as it does once assemble allow her a fairly large degree of mobility and posability. Uh, primarily consisting of several half parts that are built up into an internal structure. Next up, we've got all of her leg parts. Again, in this state, um, all these parts are on the heavy glossy side. So if you are just gonna build her out of the box, I would recommend uh, toning this gloss down with a uh, dull coat of some kind just to give it a more uh, realistic and lifelike look. Um, as many of you, I assume, have built various figure kits, Gundams, what have you, these, you're used to seeing these ball joint parts, and arguably this one has some of the largest I've ever seen, allowing you free movement of the uh, horse body and really all sorts of posability. Uh, continuing on, we next go to more of her uh, gold armor parts. Uh, these are molded in a semi-metallic uh, gold plastic. Thankfully, it's not the sort of fakey looking chrome type gold. So it will mean you'll be able to more easily uh, paint this up yourself, which I also recommend as the gold as is, is okay at best, but really could use a much higher shine than what is presented. 
coming now towards the nearing the end. Uh, next, we've got more of her armor, as well as some of the uh, barding parts. Again, give you a real sense of scale and size. For finally rounding out with this last sprue consisting of the bulk of the armor, uh, it's molded in a sort of light purple color, which Frank personally, I, I think, does a poor job of uh, representing armor, as you would expect it to be in a, some shade of steel, to say the least. Uh, why they chose to do that, I don't know. But, all the same, the casting detail in it, and hopefully this will show up, it is very nice. Um, just by itself, it looks good. But if you spend the time and probably pick out paint details, it will look even better. Last sprue before we go to the instructions is all the different hand options she comes with. Again, leaving these in the bag because I don't want to lose any of the parts. Uh, they're much the same as any of the other figure kit hands that you may have seen. So no real surprises there. So give me a second to get all the parts back in and then we'll look at the decals and instructions. Okay, now as far as decals go, uh, we're giving a sheet of the four different eye expressions that the face plates come in. So this is a nice inclusion should you choose to repaint them. Again, would have been nice had they included a fi blank face plate so that these would have more of a role to play. Now, moving on to instructions, uh, we're given several you know, example shots of how she, the different levels of posability she has, which is a nice uh, diagram to go by. So you have some idea of what to expect. <clears throat> but as with mo fi most figures, uh, instruction begins starting with the head before moving down into the torso. Uh, in her case, we've got several different options as far as how to address her. Um, we'll get more into that once we start adding her armor, but be aware that you may need to change out parts along the way. Uh, for or moving on then to her torso and then starting work on her horse bits for going back to the arms, feet, legs, all of that. And then assembling it all together as well as building up the base. Uh, after that's done, it then moves on to uh, detailing her out her battle outfit, so all the armor parts, what parts need to be removed, changed, which the instruction guide does a very good job of explaining and showing you what all needs to go where and what parts get changed out. So Kotobuk has done a fantastic job in that regard. However, I will say it is fairly lengthy. Um, there's a lot of option parts here. And that's even just what's in the kit before you start talking, you know, adding stuff on, scratch building, kit bashing, all that. But after building all that, we move on to shields, the bulk of the armor, re-adding the um, stand again, doing up her lance, and then... Finally, a few other option parts, how if you want to do the lance, and an option uh, if you just want it as a horse, you can do it as well. We're finally closing it out and doing a variety of different possible face plates, as well as uh, kit bashing with different parts, which thankfully it does include adapter parts for. For closing out finally with the paint key, and that is that. So,
I have to say, as far as uh, figure kits that we've looked at, in some ways, I would say she's a lot simpler than, say, some of the frame arm kits. But at the same time, she's a lot more complex, which is both good and bad. It really depends on how you want to look at it. Depends on how much effort you want to do and really depends on project you want to take on. I will say this, it, time of recording about, say, two, three weeks from her initial release, Already, I've seen tons of examples of people kit bashing, doing all sorts of interesting designs with her. So, in a lot of ways, she is an absolute blank canvas for people to use to model. And that is an absolute joy. Uh, this is one I do look forward to building as soon as I can. In fact, I like it there so much, I bought two. <laughs> so, that was a look at Kotobukiya's Elena kit from their Arcandia line. A really interesting kit with tons of possibility. So until next time.